Hello everyone. Today's topic is a very interesting one and it's a very special episode. Travelers Through Shape is the name of this episode and I will be emphasizing the importance of how you as an existential awareness to different variations and acknowledging their relationship, your relationship of form can be present through different knowings in which present to you an ability of being beyond the conception of your idea. What that means is that I want you to feel the grass instead of just looking at it from outside, from inside, you know, your room, from a window. And how we can do this is by recognizing that as we confront terminology, we begin to notice the shape and we begin to see that the etymology goes down to certain archetypes which are certain symbols that are meaningful based on our engagement but the meaningfulness of your symbol uh, changes as you become a more self-aware being in other words as you grow into a different form of self-communication you will see that the access to your memory changes so every year the things that you knew changed also because how you were observing and the way your mind was developing was becoming more integrative so your awareness was becoming more integrated into the shapes of what it chose to consider as its design therefore we can say that the travelers through shape recognize that man is not just the shapes that he confronts. So in other words, you are not just this face in the mirror, you are an awareness that has kept the projection of your reality present. So through the presence, we try to see how we can be a traveler of experience. And what that means is that our experience is going from moment to moment. And so as we're experiencing different moments, what is keeping it the same? Even the physical body changes completely. So when we try to look at what is keeping existence here, it makes us think of non-existence. And so we see we cannot think of non-existence. So how can man uh, continue on um, to this existential problem? Where he sees that actually the methodology is to break the methodology and simply dissolve into the natural flow. So in other words, you're not trying to figure out how where the river is heading by looking from at one outside of the river. You're jumping in the river to see where you're carried to. And so it is, it is as if our collective needs to begin taking uh, <clears throat> more decisive acts to expand its consciousness in regards to existential allowance and manifestation. So you must become more comfortable in communicating your multidimensional experience, not by wanting to communicate it, but by knowing it, but by being it, by, by expressing it. <clears throat> because this is the time, this is your lifetime. And it is important to, be, to find Mr. Within throughout this lifetime. It is important for the human being to become aware of his being beyond just the mere observance of his humanity. So we need to begin seeing, just like how we have discovered fractals in our mathematics, Similarly, experience is in a fractal-like whirling around itself. Humanity will soon be introduced to consciousness technologies and subtler planes and subtler realities of his mind that are present through geometry. The reason I say he, he will be introduced to it because that is where his confrontation has taken him. He has evolved to the point where this is the next step in which man has to begin taking steps into no longer dark forests because we have Google Maps, but into simply the abstract depths of his mind. So you are not just becoming creative in how you draw, let's say a painting or just do one act of uh, speaking or writing or doing something creative. Uh, you, you, you become a creative moment. That means wherever you are present, there is that creative resonance. There is that ability to be beyond the immediacy of what is said, or what is given, or what is shaped. And so once you get an awareness beyond the symbol, you... find a sense of 
knowing that will guard you. So what that means is that that moment when the person who was judging where the stream went jumped into the stream totally had a different understanding of the nature of reality because that is where the, his existential journey of transcendence had led. So it is very interesting because the human experience is like a ride and you see that the mind of man is simply how the cosmos chooses to look through such a shape. And so when you acknowledge shape beyond shape, there is nothing there but at the same time the potential for everything to be there. And so you, you are really again thrown into another sense of existential confrontation of who you are because who you are is meaningful in its meaninglessness. <clears throat> so the mere occurrence happens in that there comes a trust in life that goes back to your simplicity. So let's say that if you were that guy who Let's say you were a simple man and you realized you don't want to be simple and you suddenly took the path of intellect and you read every book and you had every knowledge and your mind was just the internet and you just was this person who had all this information. You will see after that, you will see that after you have gotten the greatest ability in this lifetime, you want to see that ability in your simplicity as well. And what that means is that the greatest masters recognize that they have to begin seeing that they were masters from the beginning of their childhood. And that is the lesson of the teacher who is also teaching a student but at the same time teaching himself through what he is becoming. Self-teachings are powerful because they are self-reflections. They are you uh, being absorbed in your reality to see if it's real or not or to see what it is. There have been times where I've had certain projections, certain thoughts that were not real but I felt they were real because I was acknowledging them from a certain area in my past. What that means is that when man begins to acknowledge himself more collectively, he begins allowing all the imagery he's seen in physical reality to create a sense of transition into a dissolution of his attention into a different form. And so this different form then begins to be acknowledged with a greater collective knowing in which that you see that all your fingers are connected to your palm. So the knowing of the palm is omnipresent. It is that God or that unified field that many look at. But your fingers are simply the individuality. So when there is an individual experience at the same time through a collective presence, we find that uh, certain starfish which have this quality in their design <coughs> are simply suggesting that the cosmos really does repeat itself in many ways. And so you you become a traveler by recognizing that by stabilizing your reality through existential allowance and trust in the moment of your life, you then have a much more easier way of navigating through these clouds of thought. You see, even through meditation, they, there is a sense of it that you go too far, you do not feel like you want to act anymore because you're too dissolved in your internal experience. But we want to bring man to a point where he can go do all the activities throughout the day at the same time having the ability to work with the subtler planes as well. So what that means is like, it's not at first that you suddenly acknowledge parallel realities at the same time and it's like you're looking at a bunch of screens at the same time. It's, it's at first you have one reality, your normal reality, then you see once you're really maintaining that one reality, that uh, intention of the way, once you are really flowing well in one flow, suddenly you see other flows begin to add. So there is a sense of humility in the simplicity of your approach that provides you the greatest opening in how your thoughts can dissolve into showing you the eyes that can confront uh, many selves through oneself. These are very abstract ideas, but it is simply because we are treasure revealers. And treasure revealers look very clearly, but at the same time also bring all potentialities right there. And you will see that geometry will become more than just a vehicle. It will appear to you in ways where it will transition your psychology because it is giving you the gift of multi-presence multi in certain subtler realities. So you will see that man will begin, in other words, the pilots of consciousness, as they um, even advance in their own ac activities, they recognize that 
they are becoming greater pillars of existence. So the pilot of consciousness is actually like a tree. His knowing, his ability has already been planted. And so that really means is that when you have the knowing of your roots, uh, the tree doesn't, is not bothered by the wind, you know? So similarly, the pilot of consciousness really knows that it is the greatest act of the cosmos that is appearing in his moment. And simply he is the allowance to be the observance of that moment. And so through that, the pilot of consciousness recognizes that elevation is discovered before one can elevate. And so that discovery gives the immediacy of the knowing that many of our great explorers have found to be the dream of a lifetime. <clears throat> Humanity is at a very interesting point. The reason I'm communicating these is to say that do not keep, I mean, stop focusing too much on whether your life is a game or if it's a story or not. Every communication is a new context. Understand that the human communication is novel in, in nature. So what that means is that regardless of what communication you think you've done, you're always your newest one. And your newest one is one that is redefining it. So in other words, if you haven't met me, let's say since I was, let's say, five years old, and now I meet you, I, I am a totally new person in your reality. And so this projection of new is actually how much a being allows himself to experience the sense of other through all that points to self. You see, you are in an existential romance with certain relationships that are just keeping you separate. But this separation is just a playfulness. But you know, through the playfulness, you can also have very serious action, but do it playfully. What that means is that you can command armies, but you're very playful in nature. And what that means is that you can immediately uh, alter your reality into one that is very very gentle. So what that means is that let's say a being decides to enter a reality where it is very complex. So the imagery is fluctuating and it's as if there is a certain war in that sense of consideration of reality. Now as that being within that reality, within that dimension of experience. So in other words, let's say I tune not just uh, um, I tune away for an instant into another sense of myself and that sense of self is actually a simultaneous acknowledgement that I'm having it subconsciously but I'm becoming more conscious of it so that is how the brickwork is being presented. So you see that this simultaneous stream of knowing is actually what is keeping you there. So when someone has a lot of hope, it is because their knowing is coming from a sense of self that has had the ability to um, find the central sun in their reality, to have the ability to um, find the meaning. So what that means is that um, when I am a part of the cloth, when I am being pulled, the whole cloth knows that I'm being pulled. And so the whole cosmos comes to my attention if I have the clarity of being the observance of my experience. There can be no illusion if you are self-aware and your mindfulness is simply the joy of awareness. And once you are there, innately you are a being who has given yourself existential passage because once the passages were no longer required to be read, new doors will be created to then open. You will see that you, a simultaneous acknowledgement of self is a very playful co-creation in how you are considering thought to have presence. It is something that is happening in the present of moment. When we use the term pilot, the pilot of consciousness is simply just the, a being in form who is directing his attention in a way where he's experiencing greater ways where his form is present. 
And so the greater ways in which these forms are present are shown by naturally how much allowance is present in the moment based on the collective view of the individual. So we think that everything here in this reality is about individuals, individuals. So, oh, it's all about my choices, my actions. But no, sometimes it is about how the collective existence looks at you. So think of it this way as if you have, you have spiraled into many different views of life and what that really means is that as you've been spiraling from this uh, within the same essence you have in a sense been going through different senses of lifetimes simply because in this lifetime you're considering time and space so what that means is sometimes the way you can have access to these subtler planes of uh, your existence is by actually seeing that um, it is not something that acknowledges uh, so in other words, sometimes I think, oh, should I go do this? Oh my God, I have to go do this to find this. I need to go do this to get to this level of this, this kind of attainment or whatever. Actually, no, you simply need to see um, very gracefully that what would look at what you are looking at. In other words, the simplicity in your view opens your complex awareness of all things. And so, as you navigate through these, you recognize that the acknowledgement of life and time shift because there is no longer a space for these conceptual forms to remain. And so the traveler is simply at, in, at, the, at the speed of even transcendent light moving through these shapes. So we are actually moving through a lot of geometry because we simply have the ability to perceive geometry. But we must see that where is, where is the origin of the awareness that can perceive geometry? And that is simply an inspiration which can very poetically and mystically be said to be the divine attention in your existence. So regardless of if we are talking about the observer effect or not, what is just a cause beyond the definition of a cause and effect? What is that instant knowing? And that instant knowing is unspeakable. And this is where you will see that it is a journey into your unknown, where you must journey into that which you have not looked at. And so this is coming from an existential compassion because you will realize the more you confront in life, the more ability you have because the more confrontational experience you've observed. Your sensitivity and your concentration in, in this life can, can increase uh, how things occur because suddenly they can tune your awareness to making decisions. If you trust your intuition, that will develop into a trust into your expression. So you simply become an emanation of your greater knowing. And when you become an emanation of your greater knowing, you see that you are, you are simply an awareness to the spark of all existence. And so the travelers through shape remember the light that is going through different mirrors just to be the darkness that awaits the dawn. Much blessings. And remember who you are, because when you remember who you are, you also tap into the flows of your knowing of the different experiences you've had. So do not be that cell in the body, or do not be that finger who thought it only had to carry the weight of the world, when the intelligence of the palm had even connected the other individual associations to it. So tap into the knowing of life and become a moment of experience in such clarity that you totally understand that the greatest leader of mankind was the wind, a formless push into the beyond. For all travelers through shape 
have come to become one. Namaste.